Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Angela Saavedra. I'm the director of the Center on the Hill, and it's time for another episode of Tell Me Something Good. Now with special guests. I'm joined today by my friend Chris Oranzi. Hello, Chris. Hey, everybody. Hey, Mary Angela. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Where are you joining us from? I am joining you from Atlanta, Georgia. Whoa. What's it like in Atlanta? What's the weather like? Oh, well, they don't call it hot Atlanta for nothing. It's certainly living up to its name. Uh, it hasn't been below 90 in weeks here. Ooh, I am sorry. Did you guys get any blowback from that hurricane? We had a lot of rain, but not too bad. Cool. That's good. Um, great. Well, for those of you joining us for the first time, I'm going to be asking some questions from a game called StoryWise. It was given to me by Atria Senior Living. It's 144 thoughtful ways to bond with a fellow human. Uh, I'll ask the questions. Um, we'll each take turns answering them. And then at the end, we're going to ask you to join the conversation and email us your thoughts. So let's get started with our first question. Here is the picture. And it looks like people are waiting in line at a bank, maybe. And the question says, something you begrudge having to pay for. Ooh. Yeah, um, that's tricky. So, I mean, I understand things cost things. So like, I, un I understand why um, they exist, but honestly, it, it's meters. It's like parking. You know what I mean? Like, I know that that's a way for the city to make revenue. I get it. I just think there's better ways. I also think that my taxes, I pay a lot in city taxes. So I should be allowed to park places if I'm going to go drive somewhere. Also, if I'm going to be like, you know, supporting that business that I'm going to, obviously, to drive there to park, like, oh, come on. Like, why, why, why do I have to pay for parking? And, and it's crazy. It's like, you know, I know the garage costs money to build. So, okay, charge us to park there until that cost is paid off. And then at that point, okay, you know, or, or I know someone's got to be paid to work there, but in this world of digital parking, I mean, you know, meter up is an app, right? I don't even have to put actual coins in a meter anymore. And that's where I'm like, no, you guys are just collecting money now, like unnecessarily. <laughs> where are my taxes going? Why can't I park in the city of free? So I'd say, I'd say parking. I really, really, really hate paying for parking. That's a good one. Yeah, that, that made me think about how much I dislike paying tolls too. Same idea. Like you paid for the road, you paid for the bridge. What are you charging me for exactly? I get that there's upkeep needed, but isn't that why we pay highway taxes? We can't exactly. find the money there. Right. I know maybe you're just charging us to leave New Jersey, but sometimes I, I guess it's worth it. What is it? Six bucks, seven bucks now? Maybe that's what's worth it. Sorry to people in Jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, sorry, New Jersey. Um, yeah, no. I hadn't thought about that tolls because I don't drive so much, um, but I am a passenger and often because I'm the passenger, not the driver, I'm the one who pays for the parking, which is why I guess parking is, but if I were driving, yeah, I think I'd probably be pretty upset about, about that. Those are good answers. I like it. All right. This one is for you first. Here is the picture. Oh, that's a cool picture. I like that. <laughs> it is, right? Someone's getting a pie in the face. <laughs> Uh, this question says, the kind of comedy that makes you laugh the hardest, physical, dark, absurd, dry, et cetera. Yeah, I definitely more into the dry, sarcastic humor. That's what tends to crack me up. That, uh, that Chandler Bing kind of humor, the Dorothy's Bornack kind of humor, the, the zingers, the one-liners, Dorothy Parker kind of stuff. That's what makes me laugh. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm similar. Um, I like I, I, I do have a little bit of a dark sense of humor. <laughs> so sometimes the dark. No, humor not like, you. Yeah, it makes me laugh. <laughs> That's my, my theater background coming out there. I'm, I'm a big fan of the dark comedy. <laughs> like you didn't see that coming. Um, and also physical comedy done well, really yes. like, and that'll, and, and physical comedy tends to invoke that kind of laughter for me that like where I can't catch my breath. Like I'm just cracking up so much. <laughs> Why was that so funny? Cause it just looked so ridiculous. Uh, and I think the first time I remember that happening to me was when I was like in high school watching like some Monty Python for the first time oh, yeah. <laughs> and watching like, you know, the minister of silly walks and just thinking that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. It's so ridiculous, like so ridiculous. And that I think is why it's funny. And physical comedy is hard. I've seen a lot of people try to pull off physical comedy and like, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. But, they make it look so easy though. That's what's right. But, but when done right, boy, it is funny. It is. Very but that's why people still watch I Love Lucy, but 
it's almost 70 years later because it's got that physical comedy that's perfect. No one does it better than her. And then it's also got that sarcastic wit to it sometimes with the one-liners they deliver. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yep. Yeah, no, that's, that is a sign of a good comedy when they can really catch it in. And that's the, all I can think now, all the sitcoms I've really enjoyed have had a good balance of that. Um, yeah, I mean, Friends is very much that same way. They didn't throw a lot of physical comedy in there often, but when they did, they used it right. And it was hey, that. good. Hey, that. Exactly. Right. Hey, that. <laughs> it was really funny when <laughs> they decided to use it. Um, all right. Uh, our last question. Here we go. These ladies are, is that a sandwich? A very long hokey? Looks like a loaf of bread or something. Oh, it looks good, whatever it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, mm. the ladies are holding that up. This says, a time life turned out better than expected. Mm. And for me, I would say um, that was actually probably my move here. Um, you know, I, I knew things were going to be good. You know, I, I was moving closer to my at that point, he was just my boyfriend, but soon to be fiance and now my husband. Um, but he wasn't living here yet. He was still living in Maryland. And I knew that that was going to be the case for at least the first two years. And I had never been to Philadelphia in my life. Like, never. Not even set foot in the city once, except for the, when I came to interview for the job that I took here. And so it was a giant leap of faith because I knew nothing about the city. And um, I lived in South Philly for the first two years because... I didn't know anything about the city and I was like, this is close to where I'm going and there's a subway right here. So this, you know, and I, I'll be honest, my first month, I was real, like, I didn't love it. <laughs> like I, I had, a, I had a month of being like, maybe even almost two months of being just like, Oh no, what have I done? Like my, <laughs> I left my whole life in Chicago and now I'm here in this city and it's, it's all cement around me. And I came here in the fall. So that's when like, Baseball season's wrapping up, but football season's getting ready to start, and hockey season's getting ready to start. And did I mention I lived in South Philly, like <laughs> four blocks from the from the sports complex? Like, it, there was just a lot all at once, and I was like, I may want to leave. I like, I might not want to stay here. And then, you know, probably like you know, four or five months in. I started making some friends and I started getting out to other parts of the city. People started saying, you know what, you should come and check out over here and you should come and do things here. And I really started to explore and get to know my city. And, and it, it definitely grew on me and it definitely became so much cooler than I, than I thought it was going to be even going into it. And then you miss home. I know. Sorry. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I, this is the longest I've ever lived anywhere. I've been here 12 years. So that's, that's saying something huge. Up until now, I, the longest I'd lived anywhere, if we go by state, that would be West Virginia where I lived there for seven years. But by actual town, four and a half years is the longest I've ever lived anywhere in my whole life, going all the way back to like birth. <laughs> so like this is huge. Like I'm a Philadelphian. I tell people that now because I'm like, yeah, no, 12 years. I've earned this. I've been here. This is, this is my city. I'm definitely here. Um, and yeah, it was definitely better than I expected. And I'm, and I'm super glad. I definitely am glad that I am here. And now of course I live in the Northwest and don't begrudge anybody who lives in South Philly, but there's just too much going on down there. <laughs> it's just, I just, it's just too much. That's all I'm going to say. How about you? Tell me about a time life turned out better than you expected. Well, I would guess when I agreed to go on a date with somebody who I probably otherwise wouldn't have because they were just, I was very, very choosy at one point, but well, what the heck, I'll get to know this guy and see how things go. And that was, oh, almost 10 years ago and we're still together. That's what brought me to Atlanta. That's what's unlocked some amazing things in my life and let me see some incredible places and meet some incredible people and find the love of my life by just taking a chance when I was like, yeah, I'm not sure I want to, but I did anyway, and it worked out. That's awesome. That's a great story. That's a good one. I remember that. I recently, in my memories on Facebook, came up the night that um, we went to the Phillies game, your sort of last night in town. It was, yeah. And we went with you all, and I was all like, oh, remember baseball games? Oh, and also yeah. remember, gosh, it was that long ago that Chris left? Like, you gotta be kidding. Yeah. Like, Eight years. I know. Holy cow. Um, but yeah, that's a great one. Well, let me recap our questions for everybody who's uh, playing along with us at home. Uh, the questions we asked today were something you begrudge having to pay for, the kind of comedy that makes you laugh the hardest, and a time 
life turned out better than expected. Email your thoughts to me at msavedra at chestnuthillprez.org. That's M-S-A-A-V-E-D-R-A at chestnuthillprez.org. And join the conversation. Thanks so much, Chris, for being with us today. It was great talking with you. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. And have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.